Welcome once again to SCGC. It's Thursday. Uh, what is it? August 27th. Um, I don't actually have our opening scrawl monologue in front of me because I am running OBS tonight and I can only have so many things on my screen at once. So what you hear is what you get tonight. But it's going to be a really, a really, really cool show. We have a really cool guest on that I've been very excited about for some time. Uh, I want to let's start with some uh, for our listeners who are not actually watching live. Uh, who who do we have on tonight? Start with Jeff. Um, yeah, my name's Jeff. Yep, there's Jeff. For SDGC. You you all know me by now. <laughs> I'm doing good. And let's just yep. There you go. Yep, I'm Justin. I am another regular member of SDGC. And Brittany is here too. I'm here. Brittany's don't here. Don't get rid of I'm, me. We don't want to get rid of you. Maybe just Justin. Justin is the only one who wants to get rid of you. Finn's He's here, it. so that's what I'm happy what, about tonight. What, what Finn's I, not here. Ooh. What What did I do to deserve that? Ooh, yeah, wait, Finn's not here. Wait a minute. Yeah, yell at Finn. Wait, hold on a minute. Did you say that you're happy Finn's not here tonight? Yeah, I am. Did wow. you see how he sabotaged my exit last time? Yeah, I did. I did. But, like, wow. Yeah. Well, hold on. Why is Jeff's screen green? I, I don't know. I I'm having a know. disaster over here today. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? And I'm supposed to be one of the tech guys, so you'll, you'll all just you'll all just continue on, and I will sort my shit out. I promise. <laughs> well, <laughs> while Jeff gets his shit figured out, we have a very we we have a very cool guest tonight. Um, Daniel McRae, uh, extremely talented uh, voice actress, and just an all around delight. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us tonight great to be here and um and uh, of course i was actually taking a look at your uh imdb and i, I like you were in uh remothered i uh yes, I, was, I was i was so i have been wanting to play that for some time now and i was gonna i was gonna fire it up next week actually uh because i cool. love horror games and i had no i didn't even know you were you were in that game yeah um we worked on that game for a whole year it was a whole year we worked on that game, and it was the first game I did a lead voice on, and the first game I directed. So it's it was Wait, a pretty big deal. Still is. You directed? I had. Well, hold on. You directed Remothered. I did the uh, yeah voice voice directing. Okay, okay, and and so you voiced yeah. the main character then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now when I play it next week, that's going to be really, really wild <laughs> because I'll, all I'm going <laughs> to all I'm going to hear is you talking on our podcast now. Haunting. That so is that, that point's gonna be pretty haunting. That I know, yeah, extremely haunting. Um <laughs> no, I do not want no computer. I do not want to restart to stay up to date. This would be the worst possible time. <laughs> oh, this would no. that would be the worst possible time. No, I I, I got oh, rid of it. It's not it's not gonna do it, but but that was that Are was really sure? wild. So <laughs> if everything dies, we know what happened. <laughs> yeah, it's my it's it's all my fault. Uh, but thank you to everybody uh, in chat for stopping by tonight as well. Um, it is always appreciated. I am uh, two beers in, working on my third, so I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I got my drink again. Okay, Brittany, do you want to go get a drink? Maybe. Go okay, get a go. Go get a drink. Go get a. Does anybody else want to leave and get a drink? I'm good to just do a podcast. Okay. So the, the, re the reason I say that, Danielle, is because the last time we started a podcast with me saying, I've got my drink right here, literally everyone else in the podcast immediately got up and left their chairs to go get hey, a drink. I, oh, I had my water. Oh, I had my water. You're right. Justin was ready. Justin, Justin was ready with his I water. I was ready. The way, the way I see it is you guys are all relaxing. There's no judgment here. This is a nice, relaxing evening. I well, I'm we'll, glad you get it. You understand. Us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, there is there is not a whole lot of formality here. So uh, we always start the shows off with what we've been playing recently, uh, and I think right now, uh, given the times we live in, that's more important than ever uh, because uh, for individuals like us, you know, games provide kind of an anchor, uh, you know, and and uh, you know they. They have a, a really, really cool and unique way of kind of lifting us up and, and acting as almost a life raft to kind of get us through these troubled waters. Um, so I think talking about what we're playing is more important now than it has been in, in years. Uh, so, Danielle, I was wondering, what do you like like when you're not giving voice to all these cool video game and uh, and television characters? What are you playing to pass the time right now? 
slowly getting into the crafting classes. When I first started playing 14, I'm like, I am never going to craft a day in my life. I'm just going to tank. I'm just going to DPS. I'm going to do dungeons, and that's it. And now it's become, let's, let's do some botany. Let's do some mining. Let's, let's start crafting a little bit. So now it's just been a lot of that. <laughs> I, I love that Brittany got back just in time for the Final Fantasy fourteen talk. Oh, yes! <laughs> yeah, I was just talking about how I play fourteen. I was just oh, good. What lately. server are you on? I'm on Cactar. I was on oh. Sergantis, and then I moved over to Cactar. Oh, cool. What do you play? <laughs> I play a lot of Gunbreaker, a lot of uh, Machinist, mostly Gunbreaker. But I've been telling them that I've been actually crafting and doing a lot of botany and mining. And that's something that I never wanted to do. Have you been doing it in Ishgard? Yes, yes, it's yes, so fun there. I'm, just, I'm taking it over, sorry. No, 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 yes. no, please, no, it's please. Good. You're good. <laughs> I, I, I myself am actually a machinist uh, and also a miner and a blacksmith. And uh, by this time next week, I'll have my tank mount from the, uh, from the Dwarven Quests. And I really want that mount. It is so, it, it it's so cool. Like and like the really the really cool thing about the tank mount is that, uh, from one of the Dwarven quests, you actually get to test drive one, and it like you have different poses in the tank depending on your race. So as Hume, if my tank is just stationary, like my character just like is halfway out of the turret like this, and once you start rolling in the tank, he like he's going like this the whole time. It is the coolest <laughs> shit I have ever so seen. I, I I absolutely love it. Uh, and I've got an 80 blacksmith, and I'm trying to grind my miner right now. Uh, but how long have you been playing 14? Since it first came out. Oh, oh, oh so... Vanilla. All right, so you've I, been... Going way back, yeah. <laughs> you've been there for a while. Wow. Je Jeff started uh, Vanilla as well, but he played through everything. Uh, Jeff, when did yeah, you start... Uh, I'm a recent convert. I like I played it when when the new version, like when Realm Reborn launched in 2013. I did what I do with MMOs. I put in like 10 hours, got bored, and left. And then like two years later, tried it again, started over, did the same thing. And then uh, when Shadowbringers came out last year, I finally it finally stuck. And yeah, I played through yes. like all like 300 hours straight in like three months, um, and got through all the stuff. And yeah, I'm on board now. So better late than never. Well, welcome. Yay. Have you started with 1.0 or 2.0? Who, What's me? That? So 1.0 was the original 14, and then 2.0 was A Realm Reborn. Yeah, I've only been playing since Realm Reborn. Yeah, yeah. I, I never I never screwed around. Although I did watch videos of the, like, of the Umbral Calamity when it hit, and that <laughs> would have been really cool to actually yeah. be there for. Like, I, I, I think kinda... I was... I was interested in 1.0, but on top of all the other problems, it just ran like absolute ass on everything. <laughs> oh, it was a disaster. I don't, think, I don't think my computer would have even been able to run it. It was a disaster. Um, uh, Danielle, I actually have a question. Have you been able to clear um, the Seat of Sacrifice Extreme yet? I haven't touched it. <laughs> I okay, all right, because I I've uh, I've got a semi regular group that I I play and raid with, and uh, we've been trying for a solid. Feel like two weeks now, and we can't get past phase one. So we're oh, we're really? we're a bunch I of. I, that bad. I I think it's extremely difficult. I thought Ruby Weapon was really easy, but I think Se Seed of Sacrifice is really hard. I tried my first extreme trial like not long ago because I never bothered unlocking them, and I didn't know like what I was getting into. I didn't know how hard they were. I was just like, okay, whatever. It's gonna be slightly harder. So I did like the matching in the game and got in there with the group and everyone is just uh, having a total freak out they're like oh, go watch some videos <laughs> who, 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 who which I hate that shit which uh, which trial was it it was garuda extreme i think oh I don't know. okay yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no that's and i was like usually i just do these things in the game and yeah we fail once or twice and a couple people tell me what to do and it's usually fine but i don't know they said and then i asked online and everyone just told me like nobody does the in-game roulette or like the um the duty finder for extreme no yeah you have to go to party finder for those yeah uh, yeah so. be because there there is a lot of coordination that's involved uh in what's the, the difference between the party finder and duty finder uh the party finder you can actually like y you can say okay i need uh you know like, you know okay like if we're making a run at you know uh uh eden savage uh fulmination 
uh, there's two chests this week. Everybody gets two chests this week. These are the specific jobs that I want. Like you can say, I don't want a dancer. Uh, you can lock oh, out specific classes. Yeah. Like there's, there's a, you know, like there's links for discord. It's going to lock me out. <laughs> <'Cause everyone laughs> needs Wait, he's making it way too complicated. All you need to do is say I'm new and need help. And people will okay. know that and join in and then they won't be mad at you. That's what I want to know. That's you what you need to do. That'll teach you. All like, right. Or, cool. you know, you know what you do? Just, uh, <laughs> go to the duty finder and start, uh, you know, start a party for whatever and set it to practice and be like, hey, first timers, welcome, veterans, welcome. And I guarantee you people will pour in there like the, like that because everybody's trying to learn how to do these things. Right. And so if you if you start a practice one, like people will definitely pour in there. And uh, and yes, and and pretend you actually know what you're doing. Like, like I think it was Blaine that said that. Um, it's the seventh anniversary today of since 2.0 launch. That's what I know. I really can't. Seventh anniversary. It I, feels like it just came out. I really can't. Uh, uh, Danielle, do you have a uh, do you have a favorite mount in the game? I'm curious. Oh, there's so many. Um, I love the the shark mount that I got from like ocean fishing. The oh, ocean fishing, I want it so uh, bad. Event. Yeah, it's like, I thought it was a two-seater because it's so big and just kind of lying on it. So I love that one, and I also love, uh, gosh, there's another one. Oh, the little, um, the, the, the little squee mount, the little ronkin mount. You get oh, the, oh, the little worm. The little worm. Yeah. I love the worm. Yes, I love the worm so much. I, I love... So those are my two favorites. I just, I remember when I first started playing the game, and I got my Magitek armor mount, and I... I, I used it for the first time and it started playing Terra's theme from Final Fantasy VI. And I literally I like had a little mini freak out right there Aww. in my right there in my chair. And so I just like proceeded to walk around for 30 minutes listening to Terra's theme. It was it was <laughs> I, so cool. I think when I first started the game, like the instant I spawned in Gradani, I was just surrounded by like five of the car from 15. <laughs> and they were just ripping yeah. around <laughs> and i was like what is this game what's happening it's amazing i love 14 so much it's it is. It, it is like especially the conclusion of the Shadowbringer storyline is like as jeff said top tier final fantasy like it's Agreed. it's real yes. good it's real good stuff Very good. uh anything else you've been playing recently danielle a little bit of apex a lot of fall guys um some rogue companies just so kind of been a little all over the place. <laughs> Am I the only one who is terrified by the idea that the the Fall Guy beans, uh, the jelly beans are like six feet tall? Like that's canon now, oh, God. and that's canon. Six feet tall? Yeah, according to the oh, devs. Not. Yeah, no, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. According to the official developers of the game, yeah, they're they're six feet. They're tall. six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> teletubbies, so they're like ten feet tall, and I thought when I was younger, and I was younger, like really tiny little teletubbies. <laughs> no, like th these things are literally like like crazy. There is lore now in Fall Guys, and according to the lore, these fucking monstrosities are six feet tall. They're not cute anymore, as far as I'm concerned. Because if that thing walked through my front door, I would I would I would light my entire house on fire. I just fucking yeet it out. <laughs> yeah, a fucking I would like like imagine if like like if one of those things busted through your wall, like the Kool Aid Man. You know, like, oh yeah. You know, like, no, I'm not a fan of that at all. That that is six feet tall is way too big for a fucking walking uh, jelly bean. I think bean. with everything, things get less cute the bigger they get. Generally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. most things are terrifying when they're that large. That's why I'm over six feet tall. And uh, <laughs> and uh, no, but no, no, that's great, Daniel. It sounds like you are keeping yourself extremely busy uh, with not just your work but all these all these games you're playing um as far as uh as far as me uh, i'll go next real quick uh i of course am playing final fantasy 14 but i also started playing final fantasy crystal chronicles uh remastered on switch today <laughs> and it's got some issues um it is the same old final fantasy crystal chronicles that i loved on gamecube um Unfortunately, the multiplayer is probably one of the most poorly implemented multiplayer experiences I have ever encountered. Um, they somehow managed to make it worse and more convoluted than needing four Game Boy Advances and four Link Cables. Um, essentially, if you are playing Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles online, um, one, it's region locked. Two, 
you can no longer traverse the world with your friends. Uh, it uh, you can only do dungeons together, and you have to reform your party after every single dungeon. Uh, it, oh. it it ignores your Switch and PS4 friend lists and forces you to use separate friend codes that disappear after 30 minutes. You have to keep constantly generating new friend codes. Uh, and then here's the kicker. This is a game that is meant to be played together, right? Like it's fun enough when you're playing it alone, but this game is meant to be played together. When you are playing a dungeon, let's say you and three friends are playing it, are going through a dungeon oh, and you clear that dungeon. Only the host gets myrrh at the end. Only the host gets credit for actually clearing the dungeon. So everybody then has to go back and play through it themselves, uh, either alone if they want credit, or if you want to stay as a party, you can reform the party, go through it again, reform the party, go through it again, and reform the party, and go through it again. So all four... That's a headache. It is... It's not even worth it at that point. No, yep. it's not. I, I, I don't... It's, it's shocking how bad this remaster, like... Is like because the game is very fun in co-op. I was sorry for jumping in here. No, 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 like, take it, dude. I I'm really really annoyed about this because um, Crystal Chronicles is a game I have a lot of nostalgia for. Um, back in high school, me and my friend actually split on buying the game, and you know for like a month straight, I would spend weekends at his house playing through it with him, and we were both gonna buy it and go through this game again together. Now, um. And we were so excited. And then the reviews came out about how this worked. And we're both just like, absolutely not. Like, well, I mean, I'm just. I was, I was going to say, Derek and I and Brittany were going to stream this thing. And it's like borderline impossible to do that now. Yeah. Like, like, it's just. And the thing is, like, the whole reason the game got criticized when it came out, it was because it's a fun game. <laughs> but, you know, it's pretty inaccessible because you have to use the GameCube. Uh, not the GameCube, the GameCube Game Boy Link right. to control right. it. Like, it would have been a slam dunk <laughs> I don't... to get this right. Like, and, you know, show people that this was a really fun game, and then maybe it would have been successful, and we might have gotten a new one. And I, this I, is just I, a complete failure. <laughs> I, I don't understand how Square Enix could have fucked this one up that badly. Is this um, just a case where, like, they couldn't take... Because the original was obviously only local multiplayer, like... Maybe they just couldn't make that work properly online. Like, does the I don't, local multiplayer work properly? There's right no, now? there's local no. Multiplayer. That's the other thing. There's no what? local multiplayer. There is no <laughs> local multiplayer in a game that was designed originally around local multiplayer. Like, I, I got nothing then. Okay. I, I, yeah. 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 No, <laughs> Jeff. I forgot. That yeah. is that is an important extra. I forgot about uh, that myself. Bit about that. <laughs> There is zero local multiplayer in a game that was built specifically for local multiplayer on the GameCube. So, yeah, who knows? I'm still going to play through it because I like the game. I enjoy the game, but it could have been so much better. Um, it's, a, it's, a, but you know, long story short, it's a, it's a shoddy port of a great game. That's that's what it is. I also started playing Moon today on Switch, which is a recently localized, oh, yes. long uh, overdue PlayStation uh, JRPG. It's an anti RPG. It's one of those games like Mario Three that was never localized, uh, and I only played it for about an hour today. I was, I'm going to fire it back up after we're done here, but it is charming as shit. You you all have to play this game. Moon is fantastic. It is um uh, it's uh directed by the same guy who did the artwork for super Mario RPG. And it really shows. And, uh, and, and just, just the writing and, and the, and the, and the, and the, yeah, it is, it's, it's so good. It's so good. D Daniel, it, we're, it's, you're cutting out a little bit. Um, is, is Daniel cutting out for anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to let you know. Um, okay. and, uh, who is uh, Jeff? Why don't you go next? Um, sure. Yeah. What have I been playing? Uh, not a lot. Um, no one wants to hear me talk about flying planes anymore. <laughs> I talked about that for like three weeks. Although you did, um, you did, I, you did fly into the hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'll guess I'll mention, I, uh, so just today I've kind of started up, um, control and Alan Wake, just all the hype around the, uh, the new control update. Um, 
I didn't like Control as much as a lot of people. I played through the whole thing, and I liked a lot of things about it. I just didn't like actually fighting, which is like a large part of the game. Uh, I didn't really care for the combat. I found it very frustrating. Um, all the good things about the game kind of got uh, brushed away, and all I really remember now is just how much I died and how annoyed I was when I died and I had to go <laughs> back like 10 minutes to a previous checkpoint. Um, but with the new update, they added uh, some difficulty uh, options to make the game easier. Uh, and it's actually really, really um, robust. There's like all sorts of things to everything from like reducing the amount of damage you take through increasing how much energy you generate, um, increasing how much ammo you generate. You can make yourself invincible um, and, and all these sorts of things. And there's like aim assist. Like there's actually like a lot of options to kind of tweak it how you want to play. But I'm like, fuck, I just want to play like, the way I feel about Control is the way I felt about Prey. Um, and I was talking about this on our on our Discord earlier, where, like, I don't mind a little bit of the combat and fighting in the game, but, like, I don't find that part that interesting. What interests me in these games is the atmosphere and the setting and the location. In Prey, it's a space station, and in Control, it's the, the oldest house, this bureau. Um, and really, to me, the meat of the game is exploring this place and finding all the little lore bits and the notes and finding out what happened, learning more about this world. And I don't mind shooting things a little bit, but it's like too often I just get interrupted with like 30 minutes of just fighting and fighting and it just like exhausts me. And that's just, you know, and that's fine. Some people enjoy that. So the, um, you know, these new options are great. And I think I'm going to do a, a new run through the game and hopefully enjoy it a little bit more this time. And then, yeah, I'm going to replay Alan Wake, which I haven't played since uh, I had it on 360. I haven't played God, that in a while. I don't want to think about how long ago that is. I'm going to feel old, but <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's uh, I just started those today, but definitely uh, both of them are, are still really good games. So I'm excited to, uh, to get through those again. Uh, dope. Awesome, man. And uh, Brittany, why don't you go next? And then we'll finish off with Justin. Then we'll start talking to Danielle about her incredibly cool uh, voice acting career. Cool. Uh I've just been playing, I haven't had the energy to play much, but I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. I've been playing Animal Crossing still. Sometimes I play Fall Guys when I feel like being a masochist. And then I've been slowly, very slowly getting through six. Getting through trying, six? Getting through six. I'm trying to get through six. Oh, hold yes. on, hold on. I need to go deeper on this one. Like, uh, I need to go deeper on this one. Know? I do. It'll be like the whole episode. I, I just, I'm curious. So you have not played six before. Mm -mm. Where are you at now? Um, I just got Sabin back after the um, Kefka does his shit. Oh, so Kefka, so, so Kefka's already destroyed the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So cool, I got, cool. I got, I'm playing Acellas right now. I accidentally killed fucking Sid because I didn't realize you had to give him the big meaty fish. No, it's better if he dies. It's better if he dies. It's 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 more. It's it, you get a better scene if he dies. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, but I'm like, who? Like, yeah, yeah. So he died. Um, she yeeted herself off a cliff. <laughs> I got seven back. Um, then I was trying to go somewhere and I couldn't figure out where to go. So then I stopped playing. So that's that's where I'm at. Okay, that's so where I'm at with that right now. I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need updates. As to your progress, uh, you can just DM me those updates, uh, okay. and and uh, and and I will let you know uh, if you have any. If you need any help, uh, if you if you don't know where to go, if you need like a hint, I've only played this game like I don't know thirty seven times throughout my life. So just <laughs> just let me know. Yeah, and, I've been uh, to follow a guide because that's my biggest issue with playing old school RPGs is just. I wouldn't say difficulty, just the, like, all right, like, you have a conversation and they just throw you in the open world and you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm just just going to go this way and hope it's Well, that's because right that's because you young, you whippersnappers these days in the, you know, with the internet, you're used to, uh, you're used to guides and facts and walkthroughs. Back in my day, when I was putting books in a belt and walking 10 miles to school in the snow, we actually had to think about our RPGs. We had to figure out where to go ourselves. That's the best old man voice I got. I'm sorry. Like, that's, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> I will never be a voice actor like Danielle. But uh, so, I, I, and I, I made this, I made this argument when I was getting frustrated with six before is that 
Chrono Trigger, you don't need a guide. It's it's very it 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 very lets you know where to go. And it's very linear in that way. It's not just a big, huge open map and you just hope for the best kind of thing. It's 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 so there, there's differences there. I think I think there's there's a level of difficulty where it could be toned down a little bit, but it's I, fine. I'm going to continue it's to fine. judge you. I'm going to continue to judge you. That's like, fine. I'm, I don't need your approval. Wow. Judge all you wow. want. Wow. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. This fucking attitude. I don't understand it. Like for everybody on my podcast, just give me attitude. Um you asked the wrong person. Yeah, yes, on I, your podcast. No, you did not what sass no, and attitude. <laughs> no, no, I asked the right person to come on my podcast. Oh, uh, Justin, what have you been playing? So I've also been playing Control. I have been playing the AWE expansion, um, and like immediately reminded me why I loved Control so much. Um, for those that remember, it was my game of the year last year. Um, I really, really love Control. It's one of my favorite games this generation. Uh, the Foundation DLC was kind of a mixed bag. It was just okay. But AWE immediately um, throws some really, really, really cool stuff at you. Um, I think I'm almost done with it. Um, there doesn't seem to be too much more, so I'm hoping to finish that up tonight. Um, but that's very good. Um, and I have also been playing Ori and the Blind Forest um, on Switch. Um, which I had not actually played before. Does it run well um, on Switch? Does it run okay? Yeah, yeah. It's actually like the best version of the game. No shit, really? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, um, because the first story is 2D, um, I think that's probably why they were able to port it to Switch. The second one is actually technically 3D, even though it still looks 2D. Um, but yeah, it's very, very good. Although I got to a section that is very, very frustrating, so I kind of stopped for a little bit. But um, because that game's hard, I I uh, I yo very hard, um, and I I was not prepared for that. I was like, oh, this will be a fun chill game for me to play because it was on sale uh, last week, I think. And then like the first like ten minutes is like basically like level of sad, uh, like the opening of up kind of thing. Oh, okay. And yeah, I know what you're talking the about. The game's hard as shit. Um, but I I'm what, really enjoying it. What do you it. do in the game? Like, like It's it's like a Metroidvania style game where you play as this okay. creature called Ori. I'm not sure exactly what Ori is. Um, wow. but he's yeah. a he's a fluff. He's a thing. He's a yeah, little it, So basically like you're just, you're trying to um like there's this giant evil raven and like you know this kind of like darkness that's infesting your forest and you're trying to restore it um but yeah it's hard but it it's very fun like a lot of a lot of metroidvania games i feel like just try so hard to directly emulate metroid or castlevania that they just feel like like they're just like well this is still fun right. but there's nothing like the real thing Right. Whereas, like, Ori actually goes for a distinct visual design. The music's incredible. Um, uh, I love the art style. Like, the game, like, just control-wise feels different. Um, and it has a couple, like, unique mechanics on top of, like, the typical stuff that you'd expect from this type of game. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, but, oh, like okay. I said, I just need to get through this section that I... Did he freeze? For I think Justin down? froze. Okay. Did my internet No. Look at look at. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get the, the we'll, we'll get our team to revive Justin. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll figure out there. Oh. Whoop. Oh. No. No. Wah, wah, wah. No. He's, All right. Okay. What else well, we got? All right. We'll go ahead and uh, you know what? I want to talk to Danielle about her career um, because. I'm still blown away by the fact that you're in Remother, and I was just getting ready to play that. <laughs> um, and now I wish I had played it before uh, before you actually got here. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, Discord is uh, Discord's acting stupid. But so Danielle, I've got your IMDb here, uh, and it says Danielle McRae is a voiceover actress uh, residing in Los Angeles, California. Being a huge fan of video games and anime, her passion has led her to pursue a voice acting career in the industry. 
Some of her most notable credits have been in League of Legends as Karma the Enlightened One, World of Warcraft Cataclysm as Hagara the Stormbinder, and Pain Wheel, which is an awesome name. Pain Wheel. It is. Uh, in the popular 2D fighting game Skullgirls Encore. Um, and pl- you've done much more than that. Uh, and recently you were in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, so I was curious, um, what what actually got you into voice acting? Like, like what made you what made you say this is what I want to do? Um, as a kid, I loved cartoons to the point where I kind of wanted to figure out how did these voices get recorded? Where did they get recorded from? These are definitely people, but it's like how does the process work? So I was kind of in the beginning, it was like a MythBusters thing. How does it work? Like, do you have one guy who's doing the directing, the producing, the the editing and all of that, and they bring in all the actors, and then they bring them into a garage somewhere, and it's not shady at all, and they all just record in one cartoon, and it all kind of gets edited by the same person that I thought directs, produces, and does all this other stuff, and goes up on TV. So I was, at first, I wanted to do it for fun, and I didn't know it was a career, so I told my mom about it when I was, like, maybe, like, 14, that I wanted to get into something like voice acting. And she's like, that's, that's cool. I'm glad you have, like, a passion for this. But I don't think that's an actual job. That's cute you think it is, but it's not. <laughs> so I was like, okay, thanks, Mom. That's, 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 cool. I, wait <laughs> that's a, awesome. Wow. Yeah. It's like, all right. <laughs> so my other passion was I wanted to work with Squaresoft back in the day. When Hell yeah. I was like, I wanted to do the character design. So I was like, I did a lot of illustrations, and I did my own characters and wrote my own stories. And a lot of them weren't they never really finished. It's like, they're like in the cruiser's back black hole for the rest of my life. So I made characters. I kind of drew them out while I made a story for them. I made backstories for them. And then D and D happened. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> so, so then it, like I was, I was taking some of my characters and I made from D and D and I would kind of incorporate them to my story. And then uh, in college, I took a lot of computer animated classes and drawn storyboarding classes and animated classes where I had no sleep whatsoever. And, um, something just I just I had really bad ADD and I just had to stop I had to stop that route of like doing art and computer animating and then a friend of mine was in theater and he knew I really wanted to do voice acting and so he told me if you really want to go for this you have to act first you gotta learn how to act because once you have that technique down you can do any voice you want and he called it a shader so he's like you can have the acting but the voices are different shaders so each character has their different shader voice. But if you have that talent, then that voice will kind of come to you. And I'm like, that's really deep. <laughs> so from there, I took some classes here in L.A. Uh, and so there are a lot of voiceover classes. And from there, I kind of found the right person that I had to talk to as a director in these voiceover classes. And they were saying, you know what? It's been, I took three classes with them. I was really shy. I was a very shy person. Um, so they are like, it's funny you want to get into this and you are really shy. You're severely shy. So I'm like, I mean, if I'm playing a character, I don't have to think about myself. I don't have to think about how shy I am as a person. It's all about that character. I'm taking a back seat. So I loved playing pretend and it kind of came that way. It just kind of fell into it, kind of through curiosity and then through voiceover classes and acting classes and then just kind of went uphill from there. And so, uh, when you found out that you had scored the role of it was Gwen, right, in Final Fantasy yeah. VII Remake, um, mm-hmm. like, like, what, like, like, is that something you like? Obvi- like, you auditioned for that, I'm sure, right? And like that, that's something that. Oh no! No, you, no, I did not. no, no! Oh, so this is interesting. How did you actually land that? So this is an interesting story. <laughs> so okay, I'll take it back to when FF Seven Remake first got announced back in the day. Um, when I first saw that trailer and everyone saw it, I was like, oh, they're really actually going to remake this game. I want to see how, I want to see how it's going to, going to come out and stuff. And so I was trying to think what studio is going to, going to take this game and direct it and work on it. So I had a few ideas. I was doing my own kind of Sherlock Holmes, like, like just looking around and seeing this studio might do it. They might do it. I could be wrong. Maybe that studio might do it. And so I went to a studio that I thought was for sure going to work on it. And I emailed them and I pretty much gave them like a, hey, I'd love to audition for this game if you're working on it. And I said, we might be working on it, but we'll let you know. And this was like three or four years ago. And what? so last year, they came up to me in October and they emailed me uh, 
It was weird because they emailed me from years ago and I asked them, hey, if you're looking for any voice actors in the area for auditions for any upcoming characters, let me know. I'd love to audition for you. And they kind of came to me and replied to that same email and said, hey, do you want to come in to record for us for this really big AAA union game for a JRPG? Do you want to come on in on Tuesday at this time? I said, okay, sure. And they wouldn't, they don't usually tell you what you're working on. They kind of keep it hush hush. Sometimes they won't even tell you what the game is. They'll just say, here's the code word. We don't want you to figure it out because you probably won't. <laughs> but they brought me in and they told me right then and there that I'm working on it for seven. And I'm like, wait a minute. Were you flipping the, like, like I would have flipped the table. Like I, I, I was about to, yeah. Um, so I was like, no, we're not. No, they're, they're totally lying to me. There's no way. And I didn't know these people. So I'm like, why would they lie to me if I didn't, don't know who these people are to tell me this? So... What got me was when I was, I had to say Shinra and Tifa, and I'm like, okay, give me a second yeah. here. So I had to go <laughs> to the bathroom, and I like ugly cried, like Kim Kardashian cried for Aww. a while. <laughs> and so I came out, and then we're like, okay, let's do this, we, we got this. And so we were in there for a good two hours, and after I was done, I went back in the bathroom after I did my paperwork and was crying there again. and. Then I kept thinking, no, they're going to recast me. There's no way they're going to keep that recording. So I was kind of doubting myself because I thought this role is a bit bigger than it, me at this point because this, this is a huge game. This game has a lot of legacy behind it. I'm thinking, there's no way they're going to keep me. They're just going to have me here, and they're going to be like, you know what, we want to change our mind and get rid of Gwen That's, or get rid of that actor and cast somebody else, and that never happened. So it was crazy. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is all. God, I'm so happy for you. That is so yeah, cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you, I want to, I want to uh, let somebody else ask a question, but before I do, I will go ahead and tell you, uh, I, it, no joke, no bullshit. I'm actually uh, have, I'm providing a uh, voice for my first video game role. Sweet. Um, it is, I will actually be streaming this game uh, during PAX uh in a in a in a week or two uh it's destiny sword developed by two dogs games and it is a it's a sci-fi tactical uh rpg with a focus on mental health and the rigors of combat and i play the role of the quartermaster uh who is also modeled after me and uh and i just you know i do various lines like you know what do you need you know stuff like that you know like that's you know, so cool yeah you know yeah so it's actually it's actually me, so so yeah. It's I it's I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, Happy for you! Congrats! Yeah, Huge congrats to you. <laughs> Kajit has wares. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am abs I am absolutely gonna ask them if I can <laughs> if I can say that. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them if I could say Shed. you know like you know quartermaster has wares. You know, like, you know, if you have cards. <laughs> you should totally ask them if you could say that. <laughs> no, but no, no, it's a huge honor. It's really cool. Uh, who wants to ask? Like, so I, I do have more that I want to talk about with Danielle, but I want to give somebody else the chance to ask a question. Um. Yeah, sure. I'll go. Uh, so, Danielle, I know, Um. you know, like, like John did, you know, I we kind of um, looked up your IMDb page and stuff like that. I just wanted to get familiar with some more of your work. And I mean, obviously, you've, you've done a lot of work. So you've been, um, you know, kind of uh, lucky enough to to play a lot of different characters. I'm just wondering, do you have uh, like a particular standout that's, you know, aside, obviously, like the role of Gwen and like just because of the nature of FF7, like that's such a big game. But uh, like on a, from a character perspective, I'm wondering if there's another one that kind of stands out to you. And what do you really like about that character? What kind of what makes them special? Um, for me, there's a lot. I, I see it, them all as my kids. They're all my little kids. The old ones, the young ones, are all my kids. Um, I think for me, it would have to be Pain Wheel from Skullgirls because that was the game where I wanted to be a part of that since the very beginning when they first had the first two characters, uh, the art for Philia and Cerebella. And I'm like, ooh, what is this? And so I thought of my, my favorite fighting game growing up was Darkstalkers. And I thought the art from Skullgirls reminded me a lot of Darkstalkers. And so um, I got the role for that. My dream was to voice in the fighting game. And so that happened when I voiced her. So definitely that one. Uh, 
uh, my audio cut out there at the end. God, Discord is such a pain in the ass. I'm yeah, telling you. Too. Uh, oh, oh, no. Discord. No, I wish we had a. I, I wish we had a an alternative to this thing. Ugh. Brittany, do you have a question for Danielle? I was going to add, so you did Gwen for Final Fantasy VII. Did you do anything else? Did, like, any kind of, like, because there was obviously, like, a lot of, like, background noise and characters, and I know you recorded Gwen, but did you do any, like, like side stuff for Seven, or was it just stri- strictly Gwen? It was just strictly Gwen. Oh, cool. The, okay. Yeah, and so the creepy thing was about that was when they showed me her character art, and they kind of changed it in the beginning. She had, like, a little braid or a side, and then... When she came out in the game, she gave they gave her like a side shape. I'm like, oh, okay, but yeah. they're trying to make her. In the beginning, she looked a lot like me, and then they changed her at the end, and it kind of freaked me out. I'm like, this is scary. That's cool <laughs> though, because I I came in with the same leather jacket that she had, because she had like a leather jacket and everything. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is really creepy. <laughs> it was meant to be. It was. <laughs> it was awesome. Justin, what about you, bud? You got a you want to ask Danielle a question before I keep going? Um, let's see, uh, are there any, like, particular roles that have, like, on top of just, like, you know, being excited for, but, like, is there any, like, really personal, oh, nah, my light fell off, my, <laughs> sorry, my cat has been okay. giving me a lot of trouble tonight, <laughs> um, I, yeah, uh, earlier I, I had to pull him out of the sink, uh, <laughs> he is, I, he is in a Gosh. mood today, but, um, Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, like, what, like, what, sorry, let me actually rephrase this, but, like, what kind of characters would you like to, you know, maybe do um, in, the fu- in the future? Are there any, like, you know, specific, like, archetypes of character or something that you'd really like to try out that you haven't gotten the opportunity for? Is there something that you think really su- suits your personality? Um, what kind of, you know, roles would you be, like, looking for in the future? I haven't done too many of these, but I'd love to do more villain roles. Uh, yeah, that'd be so. That'd be so the, much fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the villains just feel so more, much more satisfying. So I'd yeah. love to do more of those, definitely. If they were to ever remake Final Fantasy VIII, you should do Ultimicia. Or <gasps> yeah, yes. Oh my! When I was younger, I always thought she had a Russian accent. Like, like I'd always I, give her this Russian accent be, because of the K's, right? Yeah, because the, the yeah, K's, like you know, can, Com- you know, time compressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. soul <laughs> seeds swimming yes. like locusts across generations. Locusts, yes, <laughs> you yes. disgust me. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you should do all to me. Right. I could totally. I think Ultimicia or like Idea would be a great role for you. That would yes. that would be that would be I would I would love to see that. Um, that would be awesome. Speaking of uh, speaking of speaking of game roles, like now that you've got like because I mean Final Fantasy VII remake is a huge thing to have on your resume, right? Like that's a that's a big deal. Um, so like going forward, is there a franchise that you really 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 want to be a part of? Like like is there something out there where you're like I need. I need to voice a character in this. I don't care who it is. I'll do it. Like, like, what is that franchise for you right now? It was Final Fantasy, but that happened. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Um, definitely, like, Dragon Age. Love Dragon Age. Oh. Um, definitely that. Either that or Mass Effect. One um, of the two. Dra- Dra- Dragon Age would be a really cool would be a really really cool series to kind of sink your teeth into especially since especially since you've got a really good range so i i feel like there are uh, there are a a number of like 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 a villainous role in in dragon yes. age right like mm-hmm. like because i don't think we've ever actually had a villain in that series who was a woman um oh. I, I yeah yeah there hasn't been uh, there haven't been it there haven't been enough uh women villains in gaming period like right. like so, like um like you know idea was such a great character in in she final was. fantasy 8 and uh <laughs> it's weird because you know in final fantasy 13 i was expecting jill to be the villain as kind of like a right. kind of like a um a foil to lightning but instead we got you know wrinkled old robot pope and yeah. uh, you know, I that would just kind of through. I was like, oh, 
Okay. Okay. Like he didn't really scream main villain to me. He's he came across as like the emperor who gets killed by his right hand man. Like like that's where I thought he was going. Uh, but I was I was proven wrong about that. Um. Well, that's funny timing about Dragon Age because they just showed some of that off today, and it looks pretty early. So they I think did. people get in. It's uh, <laughs> that's a long ways off. I oh, think. you know what? I'm I'm wrong. Dragon Age Two did have a woman who was a villain. Yeah, uh, she was the um, oh god, she was the commander of like you know like the the city guard or something. Um, I. I I blocked that game out because it's not a very good game, but, oh. but uh, th- 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 I, oh. I just, I- I'm sorry. Controversial? I'm sorry if that upsets anybody, but dragon age and dragon, like dragon age three was just so much better than dragon age two. Um, th- I probably, I really upset somewhere, somebody somewhere with that. Oh. Uh, but, um, but yeah, no, like dragon age would be cool. Uh, mass effect would be cool. One of the star Wars games would be really cool to actually Ooh, do. A yeah. Voice in. Awesome. Yes. Something like something like, like a really, really, uh, story focused, like, like you should try to get on board the sequel to fallen Jedi. Oh my, yes. Yes, yes, I would love to. You definitely. Would, I, I think I think that would be I think that would be great. I think that would be a fantastic mm-hmm. role. Um is there any uh is there any uh like you know actress or or actor or character, fictional character that you draw inspiration from? Like like is there is like like you know, do you have like a muse, so to speak? Like like is there is there is there somebody that you try to channel in your performances? Um, or, or do you just, or do you just kind of take it as it comes and, and, and just kind of go with the punches? I do a lot of method. So, um, when I, when I was younger and I did this, I took, I took a lot of inspiration from Robin Williams. So he oh. was, he's still someone that I still take a lot of inspiration from, but now it's like, if I'm voicing a character, I'm about to voice a character, I'll just sing in that character's voice for like 10 minutes just to get into character. And then it gets annoying fast because if I'm with my family or friends and I'm stuck in that <laughs> character's voice, they're going to be like, shut up. It's like, I can't shut up. I have to work. So it, it gets annoying fast around like my family and stuff. I start doing that. <laughs> see, see, what's what's cool about this is that like when I when like when I talk to you, when I hear you, you're you're Danielle, right? Like you're, you're Danielle. You ha- you know, we had. um. <laughs> and then you are able to kind of slip into all these roles as, you know, as the situation permits. We had John Eric Bentley on and all I heard was Barrett, like, because he just, Aww. he wasn't putting a voice on because it's just John's voice. So, so like John. such a good episode. He was so good that to have a, on. That was a great episode. I watched that entire thing. So yeah, it was so he good. is such a good guy. And, uh, Did he- he was such a good guy. After after it was over, he was like, "Here's my phone number. If you ever need to talk, or if you need if you need help any with anything." What? I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Wow, dude!" Like he's just a he's just Aww. a stand up guy. He's a he's a classy guy. Uh, but he awesome. he yelled at Justin as a, like he yelled at Justin in his Barrett voice and told him to uh, told him to uh, to sign up for Avalanche. Like it was, <laughs> but but like the thing is, all he had to do was raise his voice, and all I heard was yeah. Barrett. <laughs> like, oh my god! It was it was it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, when you were, uh, when you were doing your voice recordings for Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, I don't know when, so I'm assuming you recorded all those lines before the COVID, uh, pandemic. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we recorded, uh, October. So, so were, so is that something that you sent in or were you in a studio with someone else? And did you have to, like, like, you know, the, the voice actor for Cloud, uh, d- d- did you have his lines, ready to go so you could kind of listen to that and bounce off that or did they just hand you a script and be like okay read this um so um when we recorded in the studio so this was like pre-covid back in october of last year um some of his lines cloud's lines were fed to me so i'd hear his voice in my ear and i'm like uh, this is not helping <laughs> <laughs> so some of them and so the director would be like all right do you want us to play more and it's like oh yeah go on ahead Yes, okay. And I was trying <laughs> to hold back my fangirl because it was like, we're actually dubbing this. We're actually recording for this game. Um, some of his lines were fed to me and it was a surreal kind of kind of talking to him while I was like hearing his, his lines in my headphones. And uh, it was weird because when I was recording for her, the director was like, channel more Barrett. And I'm like, okay. 
And so when I play the game now, it's like I kind of ship Gwen and Barrett just because it's like they both kind of have this like energy about they're them. Mad, like, they're mad. Like, they're, oh, they're, they're, they're angry. Like they're like they're like yeah. Like yeah. I don't know. Is that canon now? Is like Barrett X Gwen? Is that is that a thing now? Like is that are it we just, needs to be? Are we just going? Now. Are we just yes, going? Okay. All, all right. Be. I mean, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> that's my own personal headcanon now, you know, and uh, they they just don't want to talk about it publicly because, you know, like, you know, they, you know, Barrett's got this whole avalanche thing going on and, you know, it, it just, you know, it, it's, it's better to don't give Shinra a reason to target the both of you, you know, like it's, right. it's right. See, that's what I'm saying. So, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to text John and be like, yo, so here's the deal. Uh, Barrett and Gwen, yeah, keep this bragging like, about how you can text is... John. <laughs> well, we we do know that anything can happen in remake part two. Right, That's, <laughs> that the is... doors are wide open. Actually, speaking of speaking of remake part two, do you think we'll see Gwen back um, in in part two? Or I don't think she can answer that. Even if <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, no, I just I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, you can't blame me for trying. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame me for well, trying. I, I commend you. I commend you. All I have to say is I cross my fingers. Both of them. Four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Hopefully. So I'll be nice. Who? So I've got more questions for Danielle, but I want to give somebody else the opportunity to ask something if they have anything. Oh, go for it, man. Um, go ahead. Okay. So, oh, Brittany, did you have something? I said go for it. Okay, cool. Uh, so I was wondering, you've also done a lot of anime. Um, do you have any experience on the, on the stage? Like, um, like, you know, you like, you've got a, you've got a very large body of voice work, but I was curious as to how much, uh, how much live action work you've actually done or how much you, you would like to do in the future. Thing. I'm very camera shy. I'm severely camera shy, which is weird because we're on camera. Yeah, right I was going to say like, but here you are. <laughs> yeah, here I am right here on camera. Um. I've never really dabbled in live action, but I feel like uh, when I first started voice acting, I was super, super shy. So it was weird for the shy girl to get into something that is really, you know, you have to be extroverted for this. You have to, you know, have to have a thick skin and be very open and, and, and talkative and stuff. And I feel like the, year, the amount of years I've done this, the more open I've been with the people and I've kind of shed my shell and I'm no longer shy. So I would probably one day like to dabble in the live action scene one day. You know, it, this is random, but it, it, it just happened. Now I hear Gwen. Oh! I, I, now <laughs> now I hear Gwen and it, and that that's not going away. Now I'm just imagining uh -oh. being being mad at me because I wanted to get through the gate. And uh, <laughs> and and yeah, yeah, that's not going away anytime it's soon. It's the beginning. It just kind of clicked. It just kind of clicked. Um, no, that no, that, that's fine. Like, 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 does it ever stop feeling surreal to you? Like having grown up playing games like Final Fantasy and like, like, does it ever stop feeling like, like, do you ever get imposter syndrome? Like, what am I doing here? Like, I'm not supposed to be here. How did I fall into this? Uh -huh. How do you deal with it all the time? How do you deal and with that? I, you know, honestly, I still don't know how I deal with it. I feel like the best. So whenever I feel this imposter syndrome happen, it happens a lot. My automatic go-to is either working out, just kind of trying to think of other things or just playing video games, but it happens so often and I have I don't have an actual fix for it. So it it happened earlier today too. Like it happens constantly. And there's times where I feel like it's weird where I don't feel like I don't know who I am. It's like I have all these characters, but I don't know who I am as a person anymore. So it's weird. Um but yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a process I'm still getting over. <laughs> it's um, I, Jeff, I'm go ahead. I'm curious about something. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, like, I know you mentioned uh, kind of how you read your lines f for Final Fantasy VII, and I I've heard from different people that I guess this changes depending on, maybe depending on the industry or the just whatever the studio wants. But do you ever? Do you mentioned being shy. Do you ever have to? Do you ever have other actors? either in the vicinity or with you or actually reading with them or is everything always just recorded by yourself so a lot of times we record um by ourselves so it's just me like for instance one actor and one side of the booth and there's the director and the producer and the engineer but sometimes we'll do like what like an ensemble recording where it's like maybe two of us or three or four or five of us in the same booth and that can be really fun um 
but it can be kind of intimidating, especially if you have someone like Kari Walgren with you or mm -hmm. Steve Bloom with you, and you start thinking, why am I here? Like, <laughs> are you sure you picked the right person for this? So it's, it's both fun and it can be mm -hmm. kind of daunting and intimidating. But I personally started loving it. Just, I'm like, you know what? I don't care who I work with. They're all sweet people at the end of the day, and mm -hmm. we're all having fun. Absolutely. That is so cool. God, that's so cool. I um I I I actually, you know, before I got involved with uh Two Dogs and Destiny's Sword, like you would have thought that, you know, oh, it's no big deal. Like nobody's going to see my face, you know, like it's fine, but that is not the case. That is that is not the case at all. So I was I was wondering, do you have like so <clears throat> I know there there are a lot of actors who have like pre like pre-show or like you know pre-rehearsal rituals that they do right like like uh like if anybody has ever seen i'll give you an example if anybody has ever seen uh the wolf of wall street right oh yeah yes. you know that part when they're like uh, like they start bump beating their chest that's actually what matthew mcconaughey does before every rehearsal to like psych himself <laughs> up that's like his personal wow. thing to do yeah i did not I know, know that I didn't know that until recently. So I was wondering, like, like I don't see you, like, you know, uh, now I've got this metal picture yes, of you in, in, in the booth, like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. but like, but like, do you have something that you do, like, like to calm yourself down or center yourself before you, you go and, and give a, a voice performance? I, I love to sing a lot. So I'll just sing uh, like a song that comes on top of my head and I'll sing it like in the highest voice or the, the lowest voice just to kind of warm the voice up. So I do a lot of singing, and most of the time it's Disney songs. So I'll just sing like, like hi ho, and it'll go up. And... What's up? I was just about to ask, what do you sing? <laughs> um, so I sing a lot of Tangled songs. Um, <gasps> yes. I love. Okay, I love Tangled too. I love. I love it. Um, we could just talk uh, about I... Tangled for the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah it's a, now, this is now a Tangled <laughs> podcast. <laughs> tangled <laughs> podcast is official. My wife yeah. is a diehard Frozen fan, and I like Frozen, but I keep telling her, like, oh, you know, Tangled. Tangled's just a little bit. Yeah. I've never seen Tangled. What? You should, oh, you should watch it. It's so good. I think it's great. Brittany's mad. I am. <laughs> Brittany. No, watch Tangled. Tangled. I'm sorry. Right now. Brittany is very been, upset with me. You have no idea. You have Disney Plus. My only experience. My favorite, my favorite bit. I'm sorry. I just have to say, is my favorite bit from Tangled is such a small part. It's when they say, "Go follow your dreams," and he's like, "Thanks, I will." He's like, uh, "Not your dreams. You, you suck." I was talking to her. Yes, like, yes. I, 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 I. Somebody chat said John just broke Britney. Um, no, my only experience with Tangled right. was the Tangled World in Kingdom Hearts Three. That's that was, not like mm, that. So, oh, I, so technically, I've seen. Tangled. I just no. haven't seen the movie Tangled. I haven't seen the film Tangled. Oh, you should. Um, you should totally watch it. It's so good. It's so, so Danielle, good. what's the best song from Tangled? What's your favorite, other than the oh obvious? My oh my! What's that song called? She's like, "When will my life begin?" I love that's that it. song. When will my life begin? Love it. That's. Yeah. I feel like that. That. That should be for this year, honestly. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like I think we we can all agree. I think we should probably all agree that the best Disney movie is uh The Emperor's New Groove. Cuz The Emperor's New Groove yeah, rules. It. Like I'm sorry, but Kronk is the best Disney Kronk. character. Kronk is Kronk is my shoulder angel. Like I I at, um. Kronk is Kronk is my probably my spirit animal. Like if I could compare myself to one character one Disney character, it would be Kronk. And fuck that person in the chat for agreeing uh, that I am Kronk. Uh, but you're not supposed to agree with that. You're supposed to say, no, John, you're not like Kronk. Uh, but um, but yeah, no, I, I have never laughed as hard as I did when I went to go see The Emperor's New Groove in, in, in theater. Um, I, I was, full disclosure, 
stoned out of my mind when I went to go see it. But but it may, that might be why it was so funny for me the first time. But <laughs> but I was I was so baked when we went to go see that movie. Um, this was these were my pre Marine Corps days, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I Emperor's New Groove is one of those uh, Disney films for me that never got the credit that it deserved. Um, it really did not. It really did not. Uh, can we all agree that the worst Disney movie is uh, Shadows of Atlantis? I haven't seen that. What is that? I don't. Is that the sequel to Atlantis? That no, it's the. Um, I, I'm trying to. Is it Shadows of Atlantis? It's the one where they're in Atlantis. It's the Disney movie where they're in Atlantis. Atlantis. Is it just? I thought it was Shadows. Atlantis of, is good. No, Atlantis is terrible. <laughs> I thought it was like I thought it was Shadow of Atlantis or something. Take him off. I don't it was terrible. It. No, it was too dark. Yeah. That movie's so dark. Like I don't, I don't. That's not a. That's not good for I a like Disney Atlantis. movie. Okay. What are you laughing <laughs> at? You. What? Why are you fucking laughing at me? See, thank you in the chat. Atlantis is Atlantis is divisive. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Rar- that's he no no roar he's correct atlantis is a very divisive movie we will now proceed to rank every single disney animated. should we fucking rank every <laughs> single disney <laughs> it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be disney disney after hours <laughs> like i i feel like i feel like we do i feel like we do need to rank the the, the disney movies now at some point though like I feel we'll, like we'll pull the audience if if they demand this content we will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could we I mean we could have Danielle back on to help us rank. The, oh, uh, I would love to do that. All the Disney movies. I'm are, totally down. Are we are we including uh are we including the live action remakes of the animated no. movies? The only think... reason why those movies exist is because of copyright and licensing shit. They're about they're about to lose the licensing, so like let's quickly remake a new movie so we can still hang on to this title did 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 anybody see the lion king remake no it was you know what i saw it and i liked it It, wow wow no it's not as good as the original of course you can't replace it i thought visually okay visually the special effects are fucking phenomenal it is unbelievable to be fair i haven't seen this technology Yeah, but Wait, the like, problem is, Jeff, is that lion, like real lions, can't be all that expressive. They're I agree. just like they're yeah. just like like every time every every time Mufasa got mad, I'm like he's just a lion roaring. Like there's no, yeah. he's like it's you know, just, it's definitely just cats move flapping their mouth. <laughs> yeah, and words like are coming out. It's like there's but no, no I, I I enjoyed it. I thought this, the effects are really good. Some of the performances were good. I really liked uh, Timon and Pumbaa. They did a. A pretty good job, um, Billy Eichner and and oh, Seth, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. And, yeah, Billy. Those, that was those, that was inspiring. How was Beyonce? That's the real question. <laughs> yeah. I, we oh. need to lobby Disney to get Danielle in a uh, in a in a Disney film. Um, Please, we need yes, to please. we need to we need to. Is there a uh, Danielle? Is there a Disney character that you would love to to actually like? play in a in a live action like if you could pick one disney character in a live action remake of a disney film what would it be that's a hard question because there's there's so many we only ask the hard questions on sdgc that's not true at all (laughs) (laughs) that is a hard question well i think Moana, I'd love Moana. She's oh, awesome. that would be good. Oh, Moana. Okay, really yeah. Cool. I love yeah. Moana. Moana is very good. You could get The Rock uh uh to like like he's literally big enough to play that dude, so like you could just get The Rock to come back and and yes. yeah, like that would be fan- that would be fantastic. Make um, it work, definitely. I think I would love to, like I would love to play uh Stitch. I think I Aww. would make a really good Stitch. What, just jo- like okay, in Lilo John, and John, Stitch. I just want to, John, I just want to back it up. Remember when you said the Fall Guys were absolutely terrifying once you knew they were like <laughs> six feet tall? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Stitch the size of you. <laughs> like I'm just a giant six foot two. Just- just- just a giant like six on the floor uh, a, a giant monstrous yeah muscular whatever stitch. that thing is like that's 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 actually beast from the x-men 
is is <laughs> yeah, if I'm like John John Vi- I have a feeling you as Stitch would be a very different movie <laughs> than Lilo and Stitch. It's basically just a Hulk movie at that it's... point. <laughs> I'm a, I'm... Well, a, a lot of people seem to forget it, but there is a live action li- li- Lilo and Stitch in the works. So Wait, what? There, yeah, there wait, is. There no, is? I know there is. There's I knew not. there is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm but up. I'm just imagining one the size of John. <laughs> it, it might it might very well end up being that he will take come up with Stitch like, just... imagine him just doing that like hi like, <laughs> like, but he's like hi. he like fills the entire hallway <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like that that bread. Have you seen that on Twitter? It's the bread, and it's, like, and it's like the oh, teddy the- bear head, and then he has like the muscular body. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think if I was Stitch, it would it, it would be like a, a monster, like an actual uh, like like a it would just kaiju be a horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Maybe I shouldn't play Stitch. Maybe I shouldn't play Stitch. <laughs> I, I I I could actually see Jeff as um. Oh God! Who could if Jeff was a Disney character? I could see Jeff as uh, the uh, the guy, w- one of the duo from tr- uh, was it uh, Treasure Planet? Um, oh, you know who I'm Jeff would be? That. The chef in Ratatouille. Yes! Holy shit! That's perfect. He could be Laguidi. Yeah, exactly. I see it. I could mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> see Jeff. At as- first, I was offended, and now I'm like. Yeah, all right. I can yeah. see. I can see <laughs> Jeff. I can absolutely see Jeff as Linguini. Hell yeah, he is. He yeah, is. like like. I am extremely clumsy. My wife will tell you, so I I will embrace that. Well, I mean, look at all the di- <laughs> like the expression of like your yeah. face of like just like what, and then like oh well, <laughs> just, just like yeah. a just like 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 first like it's just like that Jeff expression of like I'm worrying for a minute, but then I just accept it and and like. <laughs> Yeah, like I could abs- no, that's perfect. Uh all right. I think Justin would have to be um if Justin was a Disney character, Justin, I'm sorry, dude, you're Olaf. You're the Aww. you're the snowman. I was I was gonna I was gonna say Mike from Monsters Inc. Like, no, um no, because like I don't, uh, I don't know, man. Justin Justin, you can be whoever Okay, you Justin, you be. can be Go who you want to be. You I'm can... sorry. I I I like Frozen. I don't like Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so nice. And Justin, you're so he's nice. Funny. Okay. I can, I mean, you're just <laughs> nice, Justin. <laughs> I, I you're just a nut. You're nice, and Olaf is so nice. And I just want to hug you every time I see you, and I want to hug Olaf. And Aww. and I just you know. But if you want to be Mike Wazowski, you can. If you're Mike okay. Wazowski, then I'm Sully. Yes. See, you, you, that would work. I, th- I think you. I actually, actually, funnily enough, I have I have worn a Sully costume uh, for like a for community service thing I was doing in in high school. Uh, they needed people to wear mascot suits for the kids for like a uh, carnival thing, and I wore the the Sully suit from Monsters Inc. <laughs> I know we're talking about Disney, but when you said you wore a Sully costume, the first thing I pictured was just a cigar in yeah. your mouth. Hey, kid! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the best character for the children uh, is Sully from Uncharted. <laughs> if so, and, just te- just teach, just like just going around smoking and teaching yeah. every child how to pickpocket. Hey, kids, you want to go on an adventure? Just, Find just, ancient just, treasure. Justin just roll. Justin just rolls up. A, he just rolls up to the kids with a cigar. He's like, I'm sweating like a nun in a brothel. Right? Like, just, oh. like I, can't, I can't even grow a beard now. Imagining me trying to like grow out the Sully mustache back you. in high school would also just be a nightmare. I need you to grow a Sully mustache now. I, 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 it's I am, literally impossible. I am totally blank on who Brittany would be. I, I, I like I'm blank too. I don't know. Elsa, would would you no. want like cool ice powers? But you would have cool ice powers. I would, but I'm too sassy to be Elsa. I okay, don't, there's not a there's not a sassy enough Disney princess. Is there not a is there? Go ahead, Danielle. I see where 
Rapunzel. I see Rapunzel in here. That I is the biggest compliment I've ever received in my life. <laughs> see, that means nothing to me. That means literally nothing to me because I haven't seen Tangled. Go watch Tangled. Go on, go watch no, Tangled. Yes. I'll I'll get around to it at some point. I'm going on Amazon right now. I'm gonna order Tangled and have it shipped. Are you saying Chad is gonna order me Tangled? Oh no, Disney Plus. Actually, you know what? Somebody in chat, Meg from Hercules is sassy. That's true. Oh yes, she is. That is true. Meg is sassy as fuck. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's a good call. That's a real Mm, good call. But also fuck that. Also fuck that movie because it has James Woods. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah. Yes. I'm just saying. I would see those Family Guy episodes where he's in it. Um, like, yeah, oh. I'm. I'm just saying. Uh, I have a really good time beating up Hades whenever I play Kingdom Hearts. Uh, it's very therapeutic. Honestly. It is because I just imagine it. I just imagine it's James Woods. Uh, but, <laughs> but um. But uh, you know, Daniel, I got to tell you, um, you you have been such a cool and gracious and uh, engaging guest, and we've been trying to get you on for some time. We had uh, we had some tef- some technical difficulties uh last week, so we weren't able to make it happen last week. But but and it wasn't just you, so don't feel bad. Yeah, even please after don't. We had to reschedule. We had a disaster of a show after that. Yeah, it oh, was. No. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was. <laughs> it was rough. not a good night. Yeah, it was not. A, it was not a good night for any. I'm like, like we we worked it out. We had fun, but but uh, this this podcast is known for its uh, technical technical difficulties. Uh, Clearly, from the green screen. Yeah, like Jeff, like <laughs> Jeff's green screen. And, it's the first time that's ever happened. I don't know what the hell happened. Like I, I was ex- honestly, I was expecting you to come back in like a weird, like you know, Wario outfit or something, or like something, oh, no. something, something outrageous. You know, like uh, I was, I was. I know it's not you. I know it's not you. <laughs> but um, but uh, Danielle, uh, c- can you give us and you know, like if you can't, that's okay. But can you give us like an inkling of what's next for you? Are you able to do that, or anything you're working on right now, or anything that's coming up? Um, I can actually do a little bit of that. Um, so all I can say is there's a game coming out in a few hours. It's called Wasteland Three. I'm in that. Oh, 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 nice. I'm really, nice. Yeah. I'm really excited for that game. And yeah, me too. And a lot of other stuff coming in the works. So keep an eye out. Who do you who do you play? Uh, where uh, where where are we going to hear you in the game? Who do you who do you voice? So somebody actually put it on uh, IMDb. Um, I voice oh. two characters. I voice a, a shopkeep on there, and then I voice a lady on there. Her name is Miriam. So you'll hear me as two different characters in that game. But I'm really looking forward to that one. Awesome. That's getting really good reviews, too. It is. Uh, it, I'm it, so happy for it. It really... And it's on uh, Game Pass as well, so I can actually uh, I can try it out and install it tonight. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> People are shit-talking James Woods in the chat now. I love it. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> please, go right ahead. You won't hear any complaint from us. Good. You won't hear... You so, won't... Go. John, do you have any any other topics lined up for us to show? Do you mind if I pitch something? And please, Jeff, by all means, go ahead and pitch something, bud. Um, yeah, so just sometimes, I mean, obviously things can get really heavy these days with everything going on in the world. So a lot of times, uh, a few times, I guess, we've we've ended the show with kind of just us talking about, uh, we talk about what we've been playing, uh, things we're looking forward to. Um, doesn't Either next week or next month or something like that. It doesn't even have to be video games, just, uh, you know, something in your life that uh, is a little ray of, light at the end of the tunnel that's kind of keeping you going right now so i don't know daniel if you want to start us is yeah. there anything outside of work that you're just really looking forward to really excited about taking a nap taking a nice nap <laughs> with some whale desserts, just relaxing yeah. for a bit <laughs> um i guess i'll uh i guess i'll go um the thing that keeps me going right now uh is my wife and my kid uh, especially my my kid, who I don't uh, get to see all that often because he lives with his mother. Uh, he comes back this weekend, and um, you know, I mean, I've talked at length about my son before, and you know, my, like my relationship with him. But but uh, but it's always cool to see that uh, no matter how old he gets, he's twelve now, but he still thinks he's got the coolest dad uh, in the world. He brags about his dad to all his friends and says, "My dad loves video games, and your dad doesn't." Ha ha. And uh, he's got this thing. He's got this thing where when we're together and we're down here in the little in the little office down here playing games together, I've I've got my my 
little or that's not little because i got my big recliner over here he sits in my podcast chair right here uh and he uses a term from uh spider-man homecoming he said he says he's my guy in the chair which uh which is which which i i thought i thought was really really touching uh but uh but yeah no just um just just you know living uh for those moments with my kid and uh just you know counting the days until i get to see him again be with him again uh that is uh the, that is what that is what i look forward to uh especially right now in light of kind of everything happening around us so yeah that's me Wow, everyone's got such like deep stuff here. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm, yeah, I'm looking. For, you know what I'm looking forward to? This is not uh, sentimental. It has nothing to do with games. Is um, I live in a new neighborhood and um, working from home has really sucked because I didn't notice the construction before because they start when the workday starts and they finish when the workday ends. So I'd go to the office and that's when everything would happen and then I come home and it's all done. But I mean now. Being in my house 24/7, um, literally the house shakes all day because they're um, digging the the land behind us and putting in like pipes and sewers and everything like that, and then packing it down and uh, grading it and stuff like that. And it's like I there's no way to escape it. It's kind of like base. It's just like you can lay down, you can put a hill, h- pillow over your head, and it's just this constant stuff. And winter is coming. And they can't do shit because it's minus 30 and the ground freezes solid. So I'm so excited <laughs> that winter's going to be here. It's going to be cold as shit outside. I don't have to do yard work. I don't like all I have to do is shovel. I don't have to worry about cutting the grass and fighting with the caterpillar infestation on my tree and all this. I can just sit inside <laughs> and I can just play some video games and watch some movies and not feel guilty about any of, of it and just enjoy some peace and quiet. So I, I'm ready. Bring it on. Nice, nice. Uh, Justin, what about you? So mine's a little strange. Um, So I I know some of you have known that I've been struggling with my weight, especially the past couple of years, and it's been something I've been trying to do. I had planned to really get back to the gym and stuff, but obviously with COVID, um, that's been impossible. So next week, I am actually getting an exercise bike delivered to my apartment so I can actually... use it in my apartment um i can i can just set it up in front of the tv um and stuff for a little while and like um i i bought it with a little bit of money um you know left over from that i got from my grandmother when she passed recently uh so uh it means a lot you know since it's kind of you know coming from her and it's something i really need to focus on and it'll be easy to just you know set up in front of the TV and just like throw on YouTube or something for a little bit instead of risking my life to go to, you know, a gym that's just blaring Fox news <laughs> or something oh like I can just, I get, I, um, that's a struggle. Definitely. So yeah. So, um, I, I'm excited about that because it it kind of gives me, you know, a bit of control over something that I've been worried about for a while. So looking forward so to I- that a tip for that for working out in front of the tv somebody once suggested to find a show that you really like and only allow yourself to watch the episodes when you're on like when you're exercising on them that was given to me and that's mm, that's, a, good idea. that's a good tip yeah mm-hmm. yeah and uh it, it just so Br- Brittany, what do you yeah uh, Brittany, what do you got oh sorry oh I, di- I didn't mean to cut you off john no 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 i was just i would just I, I i just wanted to make sure that you were done that's all okay uh, Brittany, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, a lot of you know that my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer earlier this year. Uh, she finished up her chemo, and she actually has her last radiation treatment next week. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, she's doing really well. Um, I just miss her a lot. So the thing I look forward to that keeps me going is when I can see her again. Um, when you know, whether, cause now that she's not going to be tied to medical doctors and everything, she can travel, which she won't because of COVID and everything. But, um, you know, it's just having that app, like she, she will be happier knowing she'll be free. If that makes sense. Like not having yeah. these appointments every single week. Cause she's been having radiation like every single day. Um, so just having that freedom to do what she wants and go where she wants, um, 
that I, I look forward to that just for her happiness. Um, I look forward to seeing her again, whenever that may be. Um, my son is three, so he doesn't bring me a lot of happiness right now. <laughs> 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 uh, but like my Fridays, Fridays and pizza, man, those are, those are things that make me happy. Oh, just yeah. <laughs> games and pizza. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's what I tell people, you know, in regards to things that, you know, things that they worry about or illnesses they may have or problems they may have or things that bring them happiness. Like don't, don't, uh, don't downplay, uh, anything that either brings you sadness or joy in comparison to somebody else's because, you know, every, things that make you happy are just as valid as anybody else's and things that right. things that hurt you and, and, and make you sad are just as valid as, exactly. as anybody else's because, right, because, you know, everything, everybody processes, you know, things differently and things affect people in different ways. Exactly. Uh, so that's 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 never a trap that that, you know, we should uh, want to fall into. Um, yeah. I do have to say that, uh, again, uh, you know, we are we're we're getting close to our time here. Um uh, Daniel, you were a wonderful guest. Uh, it was such a joy to have you on, and it was fascinating to hear you talk about your uh, kind of your your journey into the world of voice acting. And as you spoke, um, I could I could tell I could sense how passionate you are about it, how much you love it, and it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's refreshing to to meet someone who enjoys what they do that much and is invigorated and energized by what they do that much. And, uh, of course, you know, you bring a lot of, you bring a lot of talent and a lot of heart to the, you know, to the characters that you voice. And so, uh, you know, as gamers, as people who, who play these games, uh, that you help give life to, we appreciate, uh, all of your, all of your efforts and, and, the, all the hard work that you put in. So from, on behalf of, on behalf of all of us and everybody in the chat, thank you for everything that you do in the industry. Absolutely. Thank Thank you all so much. Thank you for having me and I want to chat. Thank you for stopping by and, and talking and hanging out with us. Yeah. And, it's uh, an honor here. Honor and, being here. And uh, Danielle, where can people find you if they don't already follow you on Twitter? Um, so I'm on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Danielle MCBO. Um, I also have a Twitch that I'm going to start using probably tomorrow when Wasteland 3 comes out, the streaming on there. Oh, nice. I'm on Twitch. Yeah, I'm on Twitch at Danielle McCray 1. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Uh, please go follow Danielle on Twitter. Um, aside from all her very talented voice work, she's just a very nice and positive person to follow. Uh, so go check her out on Twitter. Uh, housekeeping. <coughs> Excuse me. I felt like a dry tickle in my throat all night, um, which, of course, now I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, do I have the COVID? Um, no. Yeah. Like everybody like I can't like, you know, I have bad anxiety and now I can't feel even a little under the weather without, without thinking like, oh, boy, here we go. Um uh housekeeping jeff jeff knows in particular yeah jeff <laughs> <laughs> jeff is i got i got the allergies so it's like every day i'm just like phlegmy and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> what is it now i know I and know. we're talking about getting a cat in the fall and uh oh that's gonna be bad for our, you our last cat passed a couple years ago we're finally ready to get another one and i'm just remembering back to like just the constant like eyes and my nose yeah. and my throat and i'm just like oh man like you could i don't get, know if this is the right time to get that it's you could get a dog could you get a dog could you get a good boy get a, yeah get a good boy or kinda, dogs need a lot of energy and i don't know if either of us um are up for the task right now depending on the dog if you get True. like if you get like just, a bulldog or like a big chonky pit bull i guarantee like the ones we have i guarantee you all they're going to want to do is lay around and sleep i'm just thinking about Brittany's dogs and every time i see a picture or them on the webcam they're just kind of laying there <laughs> oh oh he's yeah yeah she, i don't know where he went <laughs> she's just reclining on the couch she's like she's like i'm here what's up oh, there he is there he is His little head pop up. oh there we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah we have uh we have two 50 pound pit bulls that sleep in the bed with us every night so that's that's fun that's that's a lot of fun uh housekeeping um we've got some more cool guests coming up and some more surprises on sdgc coming in the next few weeks uh the holidays are some of my favorite times on this podcast because at the end of the year we always do our game of the year uh and which is which is our, our games of the year which is always a good time uh 
and uh, Reb has already uh, committed to joining us for that. So Reb will be back for our uh, our Game of the Year show uh, when it comes up. We still got some time, but uh, I'm already excited. John, I- why are you plugging the Game of the Year show in August? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because Justin, you didn't hear. There's no more games coming out be- this year. So. Right? <laughs> like there's we we don't know what else is coming out. So. Like, like, why not go? We, we usually do this show in January. We, we don't even know what's coming out this fall. We have no idea what's coming this fall. Because so we're talking about things to look forward to, Justin. Yeah, God. Justin. Yeah, you know, yeah Justin. This year has been difficult and hard, and I'm sitting here trying to find joy in something, and Justin <laughs> is just tearing me down brick by brick over here. I just, I Justin. Just, I just think there's a few things that we're okay, doing okay. between now and then that might okay. be excited. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Re- Wreck It Ralph over here, just destroying my sorry. my building of hope. I'm so- but, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm I'm sorry, John. I'm fucking with you. But uh, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, now man. Feels like shit. We can end it's this okay. Show. It's okay. It's just I made I made somebody upset by the end of the podcast, so it's you know Uh-oh. mission mission accomplished. <laughs> But uh, no, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, so please stay tuned for more information. And if nobody has anything else, remember, it costs nothing to be kind. Uh, take care of each other. Uh, be safe. Wear your masks. And uh, take care of each other. We'll see you later. See you next week. Bye-bye.